Hi, Stampin' Friends. Um, this is the mystery stamping for today. Um, what we did for this one is called Valley of Fear. Um, I was wanting to follow the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, um, Sherlock Holmes, the names of the first four. And I think I got off. I think I was supposed to do Hound of the Baskervilles. But anyway, and um, this one's the Valley of Fear. So what I chose to use for my fun fold is Peaks and Valleys. From 2009, I made this card. And here are the instructions. They are on my blog. I will put this up when this is over. And um, I think I can make it where you can follow along. If you have what I had told everyone to have on the post um, telling you about mystery stamping was a five and a half by 12 inch piece of cardstock, which I have here, you can see. And um, that you would also need some pattern paper that matches the cardstock, and that you would need some middle mats that um, would be two and a quarter by three and a quarter to put, you know, kind of as the main focus. So you can use pattern paper or anything you want on there. Um, the reason, some, when people originated this card, I think it was six by 12. And I didn't want mine to be so big it wouldn't fit in an envelope. So the reason it's only five and a half inches tall is because I wanted it to fit in an envelope. Okay, so the first thing that you do with your five and a quarter, by five and a half, excuse me, by 12 piece of cardstock is you score it, and I'm just using the scoreboard. You could easily use your paper trimmer um, with a scoring blade to do this, but I do a better job usually with this. So you're gonna score it at two and four and eight and 10. And of course, if you think about this, you could easily have just scored it two and four, flipped it around and scored it at two and four. So that is that part. So once you've done that, you're gonna use the cutting blade on your uh, paper trimmer here, and you're going to trim it or cut it at from certain points to certain points. So what you want to do is to be one and a half inches from the top. So we'll, we'll call this the top. And then you're going to cut it um, from the two inch line to the 10 inch line. So just, you wanna scoot this down, probably before, let's do that before, to the two inch line before you, you um, put your paper under there. So now I'm putting it at one and a half from the top. Try to get it as even as I can. And then from the two inch score line, and I'm going to cut from two to 10 only. I'm gonna stop at the 10. Right there, let's see if I get that. Yep, that looks good. Okay, so I've scored that, I mean, I've cut that. So then, after I've done that, I'm going to turn it the other way and do exactly the same thing. So I've got it at one and a half, and I'm gonna go from 10, got it at one and a half, yes, back up to two. I don't wanna put my hand there so I can stop myself. Up to two. Okay, so now that I've done that, what I have is a piece that's like this and a piece that's like this. You can see there what I've kind of done. So, I want to do the middle row. I want to crease it valley peak, valley peak. So, we don't want to use the bone folder because we don't use each fold. But imagine that we would go valley peak, valley peak. Okay, so there's that, the middle row. And then the other row, we're going to go the opposite, like peak valley, peak valley, if that makes sense. So peak valley, peak valley. Okay, so then, kabam. You can see how this is, peak valley, peak valley. 
And I don't want to, I'm going to move this. I got some sticky stuff on here. I'm going to move it out of the way because that's going to cause us to have an issue. Okay. So fold it here and here. There we are. And there we are. Okay. So I hope that that made a little bit of sense. We did this one, Valley Peak, Valley Peak, and we did this one, Peak, Valley, Peak, Valley. I don't know if that makes sense, but anyway, um, that's how you make the, the Peak and Valley card. So we have that part done. So all we really have to do now is embellish our card. So there's a ton of different ways to do that. Um, you can um, just, what I think I'm gonna do is just cut different um, sizes of paper to fit on these little spots. So as I had mentioned in the original thing, you are in the original what you need post, um, I was saying that it would be nice to have um, some, um, pieces of paper that you might, that you can use that, that are two and a quarter by three and a quarter. So I'm going to use a couple of pieces of this paper here. I'm going to go two and a quarter by three and a quarter. Two and a quarter by three and a quarter. So where that one will go, Oh, that's not correct. It's gonna have to be two and a quarter by four and a quarter. Let me try that again. Like, of course it is. It's gonna be four. Four and two and a quarter. There we are. Okay. So, oh, that's not four either. That's what my thing is, so three and three quarter. Sorry about that, guys. So silly. My instructions from 2009 were not super perfect. Okay, so there, you can see that's where that piece goes. We have that out of the way. And then I want to put the same piece in here because that shows kind of keeps your mind on where you're supposed to be looking at if you are the person who receives the card because you're going to want to put um, an image layer here with some cute little design and then you're going to want to put your sentiment signing part over here so there's that and then i might want to use either this red stripe or some of this other kind of colors of paper um, on the other spots. So let's consider, I think I would like to use some of this nice diagonal stripe. So our entire bottom row and top row are um, one and a half inches from the top. So I wanna use one and a quarter paper. And then I want to have each individual piece um, to have different paper on it. So my largest one, I can use my grid paper, my largest ones are gonna be the three and three quarter, just like these others. So I'm gonna do a three and three quarter here by one and a quarter. I'm gonna do that twice. If I can get it to the hole there, whoops. It's ever so slightly. There we are. And one more. That one and a quarter. There we go. And the back side of this is a solid red, so I don't think that's our, our most cute paper to use with this necessarily. So I'm gonna try a different one. I think I'm gonna use um, a little bit of this paper. So my middle piece here is um, one, I think I'm gonna use the middle piece there and I'm gonna make 
some of these other pieces the same, if that makes sense. So my middle piece needs to be three and three quarters by two and a quarter. So that'll be there. And then I would like to have my other pieces here maybe be the same. I think that could be cute. So I need one and a quarter by, let me see how wide that is. That's two inches, because we scored every two inches, silly me. So there's two inches. Whoops, no, it shouldn't have been two inches. That was dumb. I would have had plenty if I had done that by three, by one and three quarter. So that's perfect for that. So one and three quarter by one and a quarter. Let me get that. One and three quarter. You can't be afraid to cut your paper with this one because it is... Fussy, lots of little fussy cuts. There. And then a couple more of these. There we are. Oh, that guy's too big. Must not have done it right. No, no, it's not. I just can't see well. Okay, so now I just need to add some pieces here and here and here and here. So try to decide if I want to use this kind of a pattern or that's kind of too much. That's kind of a country look. Maybe I would like to use this pattern. It's just kind of a stripe. That could be cute. I gotta think what else I have here. Could also use this light, this white. That could be really pretty for the extra piece. Let me see one more thing. Yeah, I think I'll use this white. I think that could add to it. So I will do one and a quarter. By I should have done it the other way, but one and three quarter. And one and three quarter. And then one more one and three quarter. There we are. Whoops. No, that's not one and three quarter, is it? No, it's not. Okay, so let me cut a one and three quarter here. That will be faster. And then cut to two and a half, and then cut that in half at one and a quarter. So then I have these two guys. So now all I have to do is put these together. So I'm going to get my adhesive and start putting this together. This here. And all I need to do is kind of just visualize where the square is. So that will make it um, a little easier to see. There we are. Try to get it even. And then put it a little here. And it's easier to, to stick these on if you lay this flat and because um, you can always put your peaks and valleys back in when you're finished. Super easy. There they are. This one here. Just try to keep it, I got a little off there. Try to keep it even with the score lines. That's what helps you see what you're doing. And I'll probably 
actually speed this up whenever I get to my, and I have Sarah do the video editing for me. fussy pieces on this but it's a lot of fun to make so you can add ribbon and embellishments and all kinds of things as you finish up the card diagonals to go the same way. I think that'll look the best. But if you don't, you are certainly welcome to do it another way. Just kind of try to notice those things as I go so I don't have to, so it doesn't bug me later basically. really press any of these down in case I decided that I had a problem whenever I was finished. But there you can see the um, different patterns that I used and how they look together. This kind of coordinates like that. So there you can see that. And so then I just need to go through and imagine what I'm going to put on each particular spot just to add more interest and um, things like that. So I think the first thing I will do is put a bow on the inside. So I'm just gonna make it out of this red shiny satin with the stitched edges. Let's see if I can get that done. There we go. Try to make that a little more even. Okay, so I'm imagining that being here, just as kind of a little um, added whatever, little fun thing. And what would also look really cute on here is the Noel from the, um, the set that I used earlier with the um, stitched edges and a little stitch rectangle would look really cute. And then, um, I'll probably put some of the little circles that we used on the um, other card just to kind of add um, a little bit of interest, I think. And um, I think just adding circles in with all these other geometric shapes just really um, adds to the, the whole kind of a look thing. So like right here, I might could put this bigger, one with just a little edge of red right there. So that could be really cute. Just all layered on there like that. And maybe run the red ribbon across under here to give it even more pop. Or what would also look good is some white ribbon. It would really make it pop and shine. So I hope that you will try one of these Peaks and Valleys cards for yourself. If you haven't already, if you didn't make one back in 2009, but um, 
I will put everything in the comments so that if anyone wants to try to do their mystery stamping later, that they can. And I hope that you have a great uh, rest of your day. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.